Hello and welcome to this week's video on the Rest of Saga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. Thank you very much for tuning in again this week. And seeing as it's coming to the end of 2019, I want to have a quick look around the fleet of my classic cars and have a quick summary of what I've been doing to the cars this calendar year. So let's start off with the 1969 MGV GT. So as many of, you, as many of you will know, the MGB GT is coming up on roughly three years of my ownership. Um, I've had done quite a bit of work to it in this time, but especially this year. For last Christmas, I got a rebuild kit for the rear suspension. And as such, we got new springs, as you can see under here, um, new poly bushes, polyurethane bushes throughout, and a new mounting kit as well. Now, that has resulted in a slightly higher ride height, but it's certainly looking very, very good. Also towards the end of last year, we got the wire wheels like, taken off, sandblasted and powder coated in this chrome powder coat, which I think looks absolutely brilliant. Also set off really nicely by a set of new spinners. Um, all the parts I bought are from MSC Classic Cars. Um, they provide very good service, very good prices, and they ship nice and quickly across to Northern Ireland, which is obviously where I live. Looking inside then, other work that's been done, some of you may not be familiar with, but ta-da, the roof lining has finally been fixed. Now, when I say fixed, I mean removed. The big saggy headlining that the previous owner had put on, I don't think they'd used high temperature contact adhesive, so it sagged, and this was what was underneath. Now, it's not great. Um, there's still some glue here, and there's a little hole there. But it's significantly better than it was and it also means I'm six foot tall so I can sit in it without brushing my head against the headlining all the time which I think is really quite nice. Jobs to come in the future, the seats. You're fed up at this point probably hearing me talk about them. Passenger seat's particularly bad, driver's seat not great. So what I'm going to do is take the vinyl covers off, put new foam in them and get them sorted that way. Probably reuse the old covers, there's not a whole lot wrong with them. Other things I've done to the car, I've been working my way around it, doing fluid changes. Rear axles had new oil, I had a bit of problem with the drain um, plug in this, so I got the appropriate tool and that came out nicely. The gearbox has got new oil, oh my goodness, can they think of a more difficult place to put the filler on that? That was a right pain. The engine, which I'll just open up in a second. There we go, magic of YouTube. In the engine bay, we've had new petrol lines fuel lines if you will and um, the old ones are quite dozed and cracked so I put these new ones on and what else have I done spin oil oil filter got that last Christmas and then nobody quite told me that it clashed with the original starter motor not shortly later the starter motor then gave up so I had an excuse to buy a, a high torque starter motor which you probably can just see the tip of there brand new high torque starter motor which is great Spins up like a modern car, also smaller, which meant I could fit my spin-on oil filter. Two good things, easier to service, because the oil doesn't run down your arm whenever you take it off. And another thing is the fact that the engine is not starved of oil when it starts, because the old one was upside down, oil drained out, then when you start it has to fill the filter before circulating around the engine. So, plenty of improvement there. Let's head on over to the Morris Minor, which is very con conveniently parked here, and have a look at what we've done to that. So, the 1954 Min Morris Minor Series 2 Deluxe Two-Door Saloon. Bit of a mouthful. This car has been in my family since around 1990, so it's approaching 30 years. Um, it was driven, failed its MOT, which is a ro roadworthiness test, and it was promptly put in the garage for about 25 years, after which I restored it. Um, it's been running beautifully since then. It's been restored now for over three years. Can't exactly remember and it hasn't required a whole lot. This year, however, we decided to tackle the front suspension again. I had rebuilt it at the time with rubber bushes on the front. And as we all know, the rubber products of today are not actually rubber. They are seem to be made of cheese. And cheese does not provide very good suspension qualities. And indeed, looking under here, the so-called rubber bushes add completely fallen to bits. 
which is very disappointing because the front suspension I find on a Morris Miner is particularly difficult to work on. So we bought the polyurethane bushes, we pulled the suspension apart on both sides and we put in the polyurethane bushes which was a bit of a headache, quite difficult but it has absolutely transformed the ride and the handling certainly on the front of this car and I know you think haha Morris Minor handling very funny but unbelievable it really have far better road feel there's less shutter within the suspension I think it's a great job at the same time also balanced not balanced set the tracking in the front tire front wheels and check the caster as well which is a bit of a pain because every time you have to change the caster angle you need to take the suspension part again so that wasn't ideal, but definitely worth doing. We also lifted the car a little bit at the front. I think it was half an inch, but I stand corrected and made it give it a bit more of a less of a nose down look. Other than that, the Morris Minor hasn't required a whole lot. I went through it and serviced it, put a new oil filter in and changed the oil. And why don't we open a bonnet and we'll check that out now. More YouTube magic. So yeah, under here, I changed the oil oil filters under there. Yes, it's not an original oil filter, but I converted it to the spin-on again for two reasons. Original oil filter housing, because this is the later 1100 engine, actually fouls on the cross or the chassis legs. So that wasn't ideal. And it's also a whole lot easier to do. So that's why I did that. Oil changed, um, filter changed. I also changed the oil in the back axle and the gearbox, greased all the trunnions, as many as there are and that really tidied up the Morris Minor. I'm glad to report it hasn't actually required a whole way lot in terms of work. Plans for the future? Not a whole lot. Um, we're considering getting the bodywork really looked after professionally, maybe even detailed and possibly even ceramic coating. We've been looking into this and because the paintwork in this is actually so good, we want to protect it as well as we can. So we're looking into that, pricing it and think, seeing the trying to work out whether it's worthwhile doing. Um, also looking into using a car cover in this over the winter. It's not really going to be out in the road and whenever it's sitting in the shed or in the garage, it gets dusty and it just doesn't look all that great. So we're looking into probably an indoor car cover. So if you have any suggestions, stick it in the box below. Right, let's move and have a look at the Land Rover and then finally the Toy Lander, which has really been the, the crux of the projects for 2019. And last but not least, the 1976 Land Rover Series 3 88 inch diesel. This Land Rover was restored by myself about 10 years ago. Um, I started when I was 18, um, just after my school exams. And it's actually been very well behaved this year. Um, in terms of what needed done, it's had new wheels. Um, you'll see in the older videos it had silver eight spoke steel wheels and I have replaced them with the original Land Rover wheels, which I got powder coated in this lovely limestone cream, which is the original color of the Land Rover should be. Other than that, basic maintenance really. It's had oils in the front and rear axle. Um, it needs oil in the gearbox, overdrive. It's had swivel oils replaced. And recently, just in preparation for the winter, it's had a flush um, in the radiator. Um, glad to report the Land Rover has actually been quite reliable. Let's open up the bonnet and have a look underneath it. A third bit of YouTube magic, I'm spoiling you. Underneath the bonnet, brand new battery. Um, this battery is really expensive, I think it was about 130, 140 pounds, which is significant um, when you put in the context of other things I could have bought with that money. Um, so new battery under here, as I said, radiator flushed and filled up with blue correct um, coolant. Um, other than that, it's had a service and a bit of winter preparation, which I'm probably going to cover in another video because I think that's nearly a whole subject in and of itself. Other things that's been done, it's had the number plates refurbished, which are sitting over there somewhere, ready to get put on. And some plans have been put into place for some land of a restoration. And I'm a bit torn about this. I made a whole video about how I was going to restore it, repaint it, rebuild the engine gearbox. And now I'm sort of back in the phase of it's broken. If it's not broken, why would you fix it? So that's where I'm a bit on at the minute. I'm a little bit torn. Um, my little son, he's um, one coming too. He loves it. And I'm just wondering, am I going to get more use out of it over the summer? In which case, I don't want to take it apart and maybe do a bit of a rolling restoration, make it more usable, um, put a roof tent on the roof, some spotlights, 
Um, I'm not really sure, I haven't decided. Um, I still need to get the wheel refurbished, which is sitting there, lost and lonely. Um, so there's still plenty to be done on the Land Rover, but art classics always a uh, work in progress. And the last of the project vehicles this year. Um, now this was the newest project vehicle. This is the Toylander and you're getting a bit of a spoiler because you're seeing it in paint, which no one else has. Um, because uh, I haven't even made the Toylander update video on this yet. But Toylander 1, based on a Land Rover Series 1, it's made out of marine ply. This whole vehicle started out as two sheets of this 8x4, 12mm marine ply, also with some 20mm um, plain white wood button. And quite a lot of months later, a lot of jigsawing, cutting, sanding, painting, it is starting to look like a miniature Land Rover. So it's about a third scale. It's going to have two electric motors in it in the back, so the two rear wheels are driven. Um, batteries are going to live in the front. There's still a lot, a long way to go, but the tub is nearly finished. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Um, I'm trying to keep it as cheap as possible. I think so far the outlay has just been shy of £150, £200 or thereabout. Um, I would right, really like to keep the whole build under about six or seven hundred pounds, uh, which, bearing in mind these when finished, I think are about two or three thousand, is quite the bargain. Um, so please check out all the videos on the channel which feature the Toylander. I've serialized the whole build and will continue to do so until it is finished. But this is for my little son. Why is it cream? Well, this Land Rover is meant to be cream. This one is cream, so hopefully one day they'll match. But um, that's to be decided. So yeah, lots been done on this. I think I started this about middle of the summer, so in about six months, this is how far we've come. And I think I'm really, really pleased. I don't normally work with wood, but I think it's really looking quite top notch. So there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed that rundown of all the classics in the collection: the Mars Minor, the MG, the Land Rover, and the Toylander. Um, please hit the subscribe button to follow us into the new year of 2020. Lots more projects happening. Hopefully a new car joining the fleet, but I can't promise that. There's a few things going on and there's definitely nothing 100% fixed or planned at the moment. Um, but I would love to add another class to the fleet, even if that means one of the current ones moving on. Um, again, as I said, just a bit of a teaser. There's nothing planned, but I have a few things just floating around out there. The Toylander will hopefully see finish in 2020. The Land Rover will hopefully have a decision made. Um, as to what we're going to do out then the MG is just continuing its rolling restoration. So thanks again for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment away. I reply to them all my comments, positive and negative, believe it or not, and we'll see you again next week in the new year for more Rest of Classic Car Restoration YouTube fun. Thanks for watching.